Imagine working at a company where your team's success doesn't rely on the skills of each individual alone, but instead on something less tangible. What if I told you that there's a secret ingredient that can make or break a team's performance? Intrigued? Let's dive in. In this course, we'll be exploring the fascinating world of industrial and organizational psychology. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let me share a story that demonstrates the impact of industrial and organizational psychology in real life. A few years back, Google set out on a mission to uncover the secret behind building the perfect team. They call it Project Aristotle. After analyzing tons of data, they discovered that the key ingredient to successful teams wasn't individual brilliance or even the right mix of skills. Instead, it was something called psychological safety, an environment where team members felt comfortable taking risks and expressing their ideas without fear of criticism or judgment. This revelation had a profound impact on Google and the way they approached teamwork. And it's just one example of how industrial and organizational psychologists can unravel the hidden factors that drive success and well-being in the workplace. Here's another example. Imagine having a three-day weekend every week while still being productive and efficient at your job. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, the world of industrial and organizational psychology has shown that this idea isn't so far-fetched after all. Companies around the world are experimenting with a four-day work week, which has been shown to increase employee satisfaction, work-life balance, and even productivity. This innovative approach challenges our traditional ideas about work structures and demonstrates the power of IO psychology in transforming the way we think about and organize our work lives. Now that we've explored some interesting examples, let me introduce myself. I'm Tim Ballard, your course coordinator and lecturer for this journey into the world of industrial and organizational psychology. As an academic at the Center for Business and Organizational Psychology here at UQ, my research delves into the realms of decision-making, motivation, fatigue, stress, and their intricate interplay in shaping people's performance and mental health at work. My passion lies in applying this knowledge to high reliability work contexts where time pressure is intense and mistakes can have severe consequences. For example, I use psychological theories to forecast fatigue in the military, particularly for crews on board submarines who are living in a confined space for weeks on end. I also work with big companies like Boeing in the aviation industry, where I've examined ways to divide work between flight crews, maximizing safety and efficiency. Beyond that, I'm deeply intrigued by broader concepts such as the role work plays in society and how the balance between our work and personal lives affects our well-being. And all of these topics fall under the umbrella of industrial and organizational psychology. So how is this course going to work? Each week you'll have a self-paced lecture like the one you're listening to right now. During our allocated lecture time slot, we'll have what's called a lecture debrief. So this will be an opportunity for you to ask any questions you have about the lecture, participate in activities like polls to test your knowledge, and engage in student consultation. In addition to the lectures, you'll also have your tutorials, and there are associated readings also with each lecture. And you can find the information about these readings on Blackboard. The textbook for this course is available through the UQ library, and you can find information about the textbook in the electronic course profile. In today's lecture, we'll start by discussing what I.O. psychology is, giving you a broad understanding of this particular field of psychology and its main goals. We'll also talk about some key concepts in the field. And then we'll dive into the first topic of this course, which is job analysis. Job analysis is a systematic method used in industrial and organizational psychology to understand and evaluate jobs, as well as identify ways to improve them. Have you ever wondered how we can improve people's experiences at work and enhance organizational performance? Maybe you're in a retail job where your boss just isn't really good at motivating their employees, or maybe you work in hospitality and you deal with corporate policies that just don't make sense. That's where industrial and organizational psychology comes into play. I.O. psychology, as it's often abbreviated, is a field that applies scientific methods to understanding and optimizing work environments for individuals and organizations. Before we dive deeper into I.O. psychology, it's essential to understand the distinction between the terms industrial, the I, and organizational, the O. The industrial aspect refers to the focus on job analysis, employee selection, training, and performance evaluation. 
It deals with the more technical aspects of work and emphasizes efficiency and productivity. On the other hand, the organizational aspect concerns the interpersonal and social dynamics within the workplace, such as motivation, leadership, team building, and organizational culture. Together, these two components form a holistic approach to understanding and improving the world of work. IO psychology is all about combining the power of scientific research with practical application that make the workplace better for everyone involved. And this field is global. Uh, across the world, you might hear it referred to as business and organizational psychology, work psychology, occupational psychology, or organizational behavior. But no matter what it's called, the core focus remains the same, understanding people at work and improving their experiences. Let's dive into how IO psychology differs from other branches like clinical psychology. While clinical psychologists focus on treating individuals' mental health issues, IO psychologists look at the bigger picture, the whole system, which is often an organization, and how it can be improved to benefit everyone involved. So imagine you're an IO psychologist working with a company experiencing high stress and anxiety among its employees. Instead of just providing therapy, you'd analyze the system and redesign it to create a healthier work environment. And there are multiple levels to this system, each affecting how we feel and behave. At the individual level, factors like ability, personality, attitudes, motivation, performance, and well-being come into play. At the group or team level, influential factors include leadership, managers' attitudes or behaviors, teamwork, and social processes. At the organizational level, the structure, the technology, culture, values, and executive leadership all play a part. IO psychologists draw on various other disciplines, so from cognitive psychology and human factors at the individual level, to social psychology at the group level, and even strategic management at the organization level. It's a dynamic interdisciplinary field. Let's dive into some of the key areas you might find yourself working as an IO psychologist. First off, we have selection and recruitment. So imagine being the ultimate matchmaker, but instead of love, you're pairing candidates with their dream careers. You'll use your psychological know-how to create job descriptions, design cutting edge assessment methods, and perfect interview techniques to find the best and brightest for each position. Next, we have training and development. So picture yourself as the mastermind behind empowering employees to grow and succeed. You'll create innovative training programs, identify skill gaps, and ensure your programs are effective at turning raw talent into skilled professionals. And then we have performance management. So step into the shoes of an IO psychologist who designs state-of-the-art performance appraisal systems. You'll work with organizations to develop crystal clear performance metrics and feedback processes, helping employees understand their strengths, weaknesses, and valuable contributions to the team. And then we have organizational development and change. So step into the role of a seasoned navigator, guiding organizations through significant changes such as mergers, acquisitions, and restructuring. Your contributions will aid in establishing a robust, inclusive culture that promotes employee well-being, job satisfaction, and productivity. What about job design and analysis? So put your detective hat on and investigate job tasks, responsibilities, and work environments to find hidden opportunities for improvement. You'll develop creative solutions to boost job satisfaction, motivation, and performance. And then we have leadership development. So become the go-to guru for developing top-notch leaders. You'll create tailored leadership programs, coach leaders on best practices, and help them navigate the complex and ever-changing world of organizational dynamics. Another opportunity is in team building. So step into the role of an expert strategist shaping harmonious and high-performing teams. You'll design team roles, develop communication strategies, and create team building activities that foster collaboration, trust, and optimal performance. Another area is workplace well-being. So channel your inner wellness advocate, promoting employee well-being and mental health. You'll work with organizations to create support systems, develop stress management strategies, and encourage work-life balance among employees. And finally, we have consumer behavior and market analysis. So become a market-savvy IO psychologist, using your psychological expertise to analyze consumer behavior and market trends. 
You'll help organizations understand what drives customers and how they can better meet their needs. As you can see, the world of IO psychology offers endless opportunities for you to make a significant impact on the lives of employees, teams, and organizations. It's a dynamic, fast-paced field that combines scientific rigor with real-world application, making it an exciting and rewarding career choice for those who are passionate about understanding and improving the world of work. Imagine you're searching for the perfect job, one that makes you happy, where you excel and truly thrive. But what exactly does that mean? It's all about finding the right fit between you and your work environment. And this is the idea that's at the core of the Minnesota theory of work adjustment, a widely used framework in IO psychology that helps us understand job performance and work satisfaction. The theory states that performance depends on how well your abilities match the requirements of the job, while your satisfaction relies on how well your needs and values align with the rewards offered by the job. So picture it like a puzzle. When there's a mismatch between your abilities and the job's demands, your performance might suffer. In response, supervisors can help you improve by providing feedback, coaching, and performance management to get you back on track. On the other hand, when your needs and values don't align with the rewards the job offers, your well-being and satisfaction might take a hit. In this case, it's up to you to make changes to create a more satisfying and rewarding work experience. So where does an IO psychologist come in? Well, their role is to help you find that perfect fit by tailoring people to jobs and jobs to people. They use different strategies depending on the component that needs adjusting. So if the issue lies with the person, an IO psychologist might use selection, they might use training programs or performance appraisal to identify and develop the necessary skills, knowledge, and abilities among employees. If the problem is with the job itself, they might explore organizational development, work redesign, or even techniques from human factors to create a better fit. In a nutshell, the Minnesota theory of work adjustment emphasizes the importance of finding the right balance between you and your work environment. IO psychologists use this framework to help people achieve this harmony. The fascinating history of IO psychology can be traced back to various influential approaches and groundbreaking events. One of the first major influences on the development of IO psychology was the work on a selection and assessment during World War I, which led to the creation of a test battery for US Army recruits. This work continued during World War II with the development of the Assessment Center concept, which we'll discuss later in the lecture on selection. And these efforts aim to help the military identify recruits with the most potential for leadership roles, ultimately sparking a vast literature and industry on cognitive ability and intelligence testing. Around the same time, the concept of scientific management emerged, pioneered by Frederick Taylor in the early 1900s. This movement focused on simplifying work to increase productivity, particularly with the introduction of assembly lines. However, the downside of this approach is that the work became monotonous and boring, negatively impacting worker motivation, well-being, and productivity. This led to a backlash against scientific management, giving birth to the human relations movement, which prioritized increasing work quality, employee empowerment, and motivation. Another pivotal moment in the history of IO psychology was the Hawthorne studies conducted between 1924 and 1932 at the Western Electric Hawthorne Works in the US. Initially investigating the effects of different working conditions on productivity, researchers quickly discovered that simply observing workers led to increased productivity, a phenomenon now known as the Hawthorne effect. The studies highlighted the importance of social factors in the workplace, such as group dynamics, employee recognition, and feelings of being valued. These historical milestones have significantly shaped the development of IO psychology. They've demonstrated the importance of understanding and optimizing the complex interplay between individuals, groups, and organizations to create satisfying and productive work environments. The field now embraces a holistic approach, considering individual, organizational, and social aspects to empower employees and improve overall workplace experiences. So the Minnesota theory of work adjustment is more relevant than ever today, providing a framework for addressing emerging challenges in the world of work that we're seeing recently and expect to see more of in the future. 
On the person side of things, we have challenges like the aging workforce, globalization, diversity and inclusion. How do we give different people the skills they need to work in these changing environments? On the job and organization side of things, we face challenges like the trend towards deregulation, with organizations now having more power and flexibility in how they operate. A significant issue is the increasing presence of technology in the workplace, creating what some call the fourth industrial revolution, where it's completely transforming how we operate in the workplace, even compared to just a decade ago. In particular, automation is becoming more prevalent, with work being increasingly done by robots and algorithms. So how do we help people transition and reskill whose jobs are becoming redundant? In addition, we're witnessing the rise of the gig economy, with more people turning to freelance and contract-based work. IO psychologists need to develop strategies for optimizing gig workers' experiences by creating effective onboarding processes, fostering a sense of belonging and engagement, and understanding how to motivate and manage a more transient workforce. Mental health and well-being are also becoming increasingly recognized as being important in the workplace. IO psychologists have to develop and implement programs that promote psychological well-being and address work-related stress and support employees in coping with personal and professional challenges. Ethical considerations are also crucial. So as IO psychologists deal with sensitive information that have the potential to significantly impact employees' lives, they have to consistently uphold high ethical standards, including maintaining confidentiality, avoiding conflicts of interest, and ensuring that their interventions are grounded in evidence-based practices. And finally, the rise of globalization requires IO psychologists to develop cross-cultural competencies, enabling them to design interventions and programs that are effective across different cultural contexts while fostering an inclusive work environment where all employees feel valued and respected. By addressing these challenges, IO psychologists can play a vital role in shaping the future of work, ensuring that both individuals and organizations can thrive in this ever-changing landscape.